Hello, everybody. In just a minute, and I will wait for a few more people to show up because you'll have to make a decision on how do you want me to do the, um, what's my call it? The jewelry box. And I wrote jewel tea instead of jewelry. I'll have to fix that title. Sorry. Anyway, so I got uh, during the weekend, and you know that I wasn't very active during the weekend. I got a few questions about, hi, Amber, hi, Deborah, about uh, making that uh, full Burlwood jewelry box. And it was um, about actually making the base of the box and then about applying the veneer, I mean, about all kinds of elements of actually making the the box itself so i've already prepared the um, uh, wall base and i thought of actually asking you how do you want me to continue um initially i wanted to just use because i still have a whole um, hunk of that uh, for malachite that I made a tutorial of, of a while back, but then I thought that um, some of the requests for help and advice were about the um, uh, inlay and microcane part. Hi, Teresa. Uh, well, it's actually trying to catch up on the one I didn't do on Sunday because I didn't feel good enough for a life. Uh, so, because some of the questions uh, and uh, requests for um, advice were about the the inlay part and the micro caning uh, part. Hi, Joachim. Um, so I thought of uh, letting you decide if you'd rather make me uh, if you'd rather me making this box. Hi, Catherine, Judy. Um, in uh, like a full veneer like malachite the same as i did the uh, for burlwood or if you thank you judy i didn't know who did that that is an awesome i have one in the influencer store uh that's even a tad cheaper a couple dollars cheaper but i cannot put the same thing both in the in the wish list and in the influencer that is so awesome because I thought that at that price, it can be used both as a template and as a baking blank. So it is really, really useful, something like that. Okay, so would you rather make me do the box with the malachite veneer or with the canes and inlays and stuff veneer, micro canes and canes? Because, as I said, I saw that I already did one, so maybe you'd rather have me show you how to do something like that with canes. Yeah. Because depending on that, that's what I'm going to bring out. And uh, we will make one that's not domed. We'll make one just flat. So would you rather go on the on the cane to see how a cane jewelry box can be done? It's all up to you. I'll wait for suggestions in the chat. Canes, canes. <laughs> okay. Let me grab some my some of my cane boxes. Lots of stuff. Yeah, I will do some micro canes because I have some micro canes and on jewelry boxes the micro canes work beautiful for borders and things like that. So let's see if we find something here that would match. 
this and that. Let me see what I have already micro -caned. I know you probably will start drooling on these. I'll show them to you close up, I promise. Let me just uh, get some that I'm sure will be enough to cover the box. Because on some of them I don't have a lot. This is definitely not enough. And you can also do like uh, moku megane and then use some micro caning oh the malachite I can do later a regular malachite because I intended to do a malachite with uh, four gold because that's uh, that's what I was practically planning to make something of malachite with four gold for a piece for the four metals section where I talk about four gold. Because four gold is one of the hardest to achieve of all. Okay, let me see. I do have some more Kumeganes here. And some other concoctions. And I have some veneers as well. And maybe we can combine some veneers with micro canes. So let's see. So this would be a cane that I should have enough to do one layer of wall. Let me see if I have a micro cane for it. Get this lower so you can see. This one amazingly gives a look of glass to any beads you make with it. And it's very interesting. And it has absolutely no translucent in it. Come on, camera. Come on. Just doesn't want to. Oh. There you go. It's the back end also. It's not perfectly. Yeah, I have several boxes full of pretties. Okay, with these ones, I should be able to cover some as well. This one is a. Um, it's made. It gives an a feeling of the Japanese bamboo type things, the way that I chose it. And uh, the beads made with it look pretty much. This is more in a Marrakesh tiles style. Let me see what I have as micros. This one, this one that's darker. And I have some blanks. Okay, this one is the so-called pomegranate. It's very tiny. And it has stuff that looks like pomegranate seeds. And I have some, but these are round, so they do, except for this one. And they are not enough. So, these look a little, a little bit alike. But I'd rather choose something like this with a darker. Let me see what veneers I have. Like in Mokumegan. <laughs> Because one of the biggest issues that I noticed happened uh, was with uh, getting the covering of the box uh, uniformly even. 
a lot of people seem to have problems with that. Well, let's see if we do this one. How much of it I have? This is a translucent, so no. why don't we make something actually better? So let me see which of these I want. I'm gonna keep this one for these. Why don't we use these two? And then let's make a I would say a, the problem is that I have a very poor quality white for some reason the um, oh I know I know I know we're gonna do some Marrakesh style and I'm gonna reduce this one um, for some reason I, I think I talked about this before. Sometimes the the primo white, and it happened. Uh, this happened also last year in summer. Is has a very weird softness. It's not like you can leach it. Um. Yeah, no problem, Judy. You can watch it afterwards if you don't manage to come back. Uh, no matter if you leach it, it still has the same consistency and uh, it's very soft and stretchy. It's very weird. And when you bake it, it, it feels like vinyl. I mean, yeah, I know that polymer clay is essentially PVC, but still, it's got a horrible vinyl -y feeling. And it definitely does not work for canes. It deforms too much. It's too stretchy. That's why I'd rather not work with the uh, white in canes. But we can do another type of Marrakesh style. And I had started showing you something about it, and I will still do a tutorial with that uh, pretty soon. Now that I'm back on track with my pain management and I can do stuff again, I'll catch up in no time. Okay, so. I am going to use this cane. Um, I don't know how many of you are uh, knowledgeable in the um, um, Algerian and Moroccan um, tiles. Uh, they most of the time they are white and blue. Sometimes they will have some uh, green or some yellow. But they are very arabesque-ish, and um, I intend to make a few canes uh, that are inspired by the Marrakesh tiles. But uh, even if I cannot make canes, I can still use the white to make something in the Marrakesh style, and we can use these um, stamps again and then do the border with cane. So I'm going to try and do the, the veneer with white and a blue alcohol ink. Yes, it is absolutely horrible to work with. I mean, as veneers, it, huh, it's okay, but when you try to use it in case, it's absolutely horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, let me make sure that my thing is in. I don't own a never need. I hope to have one. 
soon because as soon as I get my uh, enough perk points with polyclay play, you need 1200 perk points to get one for free. <laughs> And yes, I fully intend to show you how to work with that. And I have a drawer full of old clay that I don't dare to try conditioning without that. Okay. So I showed you before, this will be pretty much the third part of that try project with various uh, effects. So we will use something similar for the box. And then we will put canes on. But I need it to be a little bit thicker because obviously I need to put stamps on it. And the stamps will thin them out. So it is going to be a bit iffy to line up this. But I'll show you a trick to make sure that you go in line. So this is on the thickest setting right now. So I'm putting my ruler here. And then I'm going to want this, the middle of this running through. I could go like this, maybe, but I'd rather go like this. And I think that this one has the best middle. Yeah, this one could work too, not this one. This is a set and you can find it in my uh, influencer store. It's a set that works really, really nice on a lot of things. Uh, if you remember when I did the review of the American Body Art um, mica powders, I made bracelets just using these and they looked gorgeous. Actually, let me do this and I'll show you some. Okay, so I'm going to prop my stamp against the rubber. Against the ruler, not against the rubber, the rubber of the stamp against the ruler. so that I can place it equally. And hope that I'm pushing hard enough on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they don't make the sea, sea green they haven't been making it for a long time now, did they? Okay, I went wrong with one of them. Darn it. I didn't push it enough. Hey, let's see, that's the, the good part is that when you're still at this phase, you can remake it with no big issues. But this should teach me to not look at the chat when I'm doing stuff here. <laughs> Okay, let me look first at the chat to make sure that I... Thank you, Debra. Okay, so once again, fix the ruler. And this time, pay attention to where the rubber goes, the edge of the rubber.
and it will look pretty much like a texture sheet just by uh, placing the rubber stamp continuously in a good alignment. Maybe I should make a texture sheet with this, with the oil model, or with the bacon bend. This looks like a great texture sheet. And remember, I showed you how to make both, how to work both with Oyomaru and with the uh, bacon bend to do your own stuff. And honestly, you can even, because I know it's a whole deal of talk about, oh yeah, you can carve your own things out of rubber and why rubber when you have polymer clay and bacon bend? Why mess up your wrist? I mean, yeah, I know that the photosensitive clear uh, stamps are a little bit more expensive to make, but carving polymer clay, it's really easy. Okay. Now I'm going to, so I need, if I remember right, I made this one inch. No, I made it one inch and uh, and three, one inch and one eighth. Okay, so. Good. This requires a, quite a bit of precise measuring. If you want to get, uh, that's the difference between trying to make it with the um, veneer compared to making it with canes and stamps. It requires a lot more precise measuring. Like you remember how I had to go in a specific way for the lid of the burlwood one? Because if you want those circles to, to be perfect, you kind of need that. Otherwise, they'll go all wonky on you. Okay, so now let's measure another inch and an eight. Approximately, how much do I have here? Mm, almost 12 inches, so that should be fine. And what I will be doing, I will be making um a sticker bottom a little bit and I will reduce this cane to smithereens to make a border on the bottom then on the top as I said I'm going to make a round flat top this time and I will make a border or maybe even two borders 
with this and then a round stamped middle maybe with a little knob to lift it we'll see okay no yeah yeah it's very deep and it's very nice and it's excellent to use that um, capillary effect of the things I'm just picking a few things here. Okay, so first what I'm going to do, because I have here blue, a pinch of green, and actually I don't have green, I only have the yellow, so let me grab some yellow. So I am going first to use the yellow and green to do a bit of capillary. I'm trying to get the whole. And then a dash of green on the other points. Because see how I made the, the yellow where the two hearts come together. And then I'm going to place the green at these other points. And I have a lighter uh, ranger. This is the sailboat blue. And this one, I'm going to place it right here. Oops, that was not very well placed. And now I'm going to gently spread it using the alcohol. then gently blot it out because I want a pretty much a watercolor effect as background and if I need it a little more washed out I just add a pinch more alcohol I think I want more, see how I have on the top part, I have more of a watercolor effect. And I might want to add some more. Uh, it needs a few yellows here. And see now I'm placing it on the wet. Mm. 
not on the dry anymore. And a little bit more blue on these spots. And once again, reinforce the watercolor and blot it gently. Because as I said, I want the background to be fairly subdued with the watercolor effect, like I was painting in watercolor. Now, are we going to want to make any kind of uh, uh, metallic embellishments? You think, should we go with silver or with gold? What do you think? Okay, silver it is. Now, I'm going to take, and here it takes a lot of care. I'm going to take the darker blue, so this is the Pinata Baja blue. And I'm going to enhance in these hearts that are in the middle. But this time, I'm only going to go for the capillary effect. Yeah, I think the points are better. That was a little bit too much. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfectly perfect at all. And you'll see uh, the effect will be a little bit different because once it's baked, we are going to sand this. So we are going to be left with a design underneath colored and the top will be white. Yes, you should, because you can do such beautiful things with alcohol rings. Just a minute, I'm trying to find this. Okay, now you have to know that the metallic alcohol inks give beautiful, beautiful effects on uh, the capillary. Um, if you have watched my dragon skin tutorial, you saw the, okay, you saw the gold, the effect that, that gold has on black. It's absolutely gorgeous. For some reason, it doesn't want to come out. Okay. 
Oh no, it's coming out. Uh, always with the metallic inks, make sure that you shake them really, 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 really well. That's why they have that little bead in there, exactly like nail polish. Time, let's go. Still not very well. It's still not very silverish. I'm not happy about it. It should leave way more silver more metallic -y stuff. This should do it. And then blot the excess again. And as I said, don't worry because whatever is too much excess, seems like it's too much excess, it will come off when sanding. So that will not be a problem. Now, before doing anything else, what I want to do first is to do the, remember the inside of the, yeah, it does, but it was kind of grayish, the inside of the lid. So, let me grab a piece of scrap. <laughs> I know that you can do it. There's another technique where you can um, just make, if you want to have a lid, and I'll make probably on a, I was thinking of doing a patchwork one, where you can make the lid coming over the bottom of the box. Uh, but for now, we'll go with this one because it's better. And that one, you want to do it on uh, taller boxes, taller than this. But I fully intend to make a box, a rectangular box, all from scratch with no support whatsoever. And uh, I will show you on that one how to do that kind of lid. Because I want to do one with that kind of lid and one with hinged lid. That's why I got those little hinges. Okay, and I didn't cut right. Never mind. Okay, now I did it properly. And we place this right, oops, right on the inside at the very edge. Bring the edge of your strip at the edge of the... So don't fix it permanently. First kind of place it and then straighten it up.
make sure that it comes perfectly to the edge here. Let's see if this one I'm trying. No, not yet. Or maybe. Uh, this, uh, you get it at uh, Hobby Lobby. I don't think anybody else is selling it. Um, it's like six bucks or something like that. But why I use it, it's number one, it's um, lighter than the other one. And this tip allows me to be able to roll at an angle when I have like bracelet. Uh, edges. Oh, and another thing Trish sent me, and I'm supposed to uh, check it. Hold on, it's somewhere here. She got these new travel rollers that you can store some uh, stuff inside if you're traveling. But they are very light, and I said I was going to try them because they are even lighter than this. So my thing is not to tire my hands, so I need to keep it close. Okay, now let's place the that veneer on, the stamped veneer on the sides. And this is what happens when you're on the last drops of your Yeah, it's much lighter than the than this. I mean, this one is excellent when you try to uh, flatten a texture in clay, but otherwise, it's kind of heavy for my hands. Okay. Now I'm going to prefer this end to this end because I have a little bit too much color on that end. Make sure that I have a perfectly straight cut.
I want to tell you that I was poking my tongue out. I was so focused on this. Okay, so... We are in a little bit of a conundrum here. I'm going to have to pull on it a little bit so I can make the stamps match. doesn't seem to happen. And yeah, if you want to do something really pretty, you might have to work a little bit at, um, you know, setting everything to align nicely. And here I'm going to have to get it just a little bit more. And remember, always you can make the clay do what you want, not what it wants. You need to push very, very gently so you don't distort the completely the imprints because you want to be able to uh, still sand the raised areas. But if you move it really, really gently, you will be able to. There we go. I know I fussed a lot with this, but you will love it, I promise you.
very, very gently. Because we only want to, we don't want to flatten the stamp impression just to get rid of possible air bubble. Anyway, even if you put a veneer directly and you don't have to mess up with it so much, do not put it in the in the oven right away. Uh, because it might start sliding. So let that, uh, whatever you use, bacon bond or uh, liquid clay, let it thicken out a little bit. There you are. This one is better. But remember, we have a lip here of hard clay, so we can trim against it easily. But we are going to put something here anyway. So. And there we are. This is good. I think it's pretty much ready to go in the oven. Okay, I shall be right back in a minute. Hello, gorgeous. I know. Okay, so what I want to tell you, do not worry, even if I start hurting and we have to interrupt, I fully intend to do several lives on this subject, uh, maybe at least one more during the week and maybe another one. Now this looks pretty for a pair of earrings or a pendant. We'll see in a minute. Um, at least another one during the week if not two, to finish both these projects and we'll work them and we'll work at them some simultaneously. Now, for the fairy wings or mermaid tail, whichever you want to, because I'm as I promised, I'm going to show you several ways of making them. And you will need this. These are those disposable baking pans now one of the ways is to get one of these and we can actually get this Let, let's go with this one because it's faster and I'll do this other one on uh, 
on the next one. Okay, so what this is based on practically, it is based on embossing. Now, what we need to keep in mind, number one, when making fairy wings, most of the um, one of a kind art dolls, uh, the standard is pretty much of them being six inches tall. Sometimes they are smaller, they can go low to uh, eight inches small, sorry. Sometimes they are smaller, they can go uh, down to six inches, but generally speaking, especially if you're trying, because if you manage to become a, a master artist into making fairy wings for one of our kind art dolls, they sell very nice. So, number one, keep in mind that you would be working for to make fairy wings for a doll that's at most eight inches long tall so if you'd make some fairy wings that are this big that would be disproportionate um you have to think that it has to be something uh Yeah, it, it has to be something that would fit a doll that's only this doll that I'm trying to. So generally speaking, if you make the wings this big, I kind of, eh, you know, I mean, if you make a wing that would be this big for a doll, this, for a doll, this tall, they are a pinch too long what the way I would go when I would make my the ones for my own I would go for them a little bit shorter because also you have to think about something number one yes I know Angelina and iridescent cellophane are very sought after to make uh, fairy wings but the problem is that you cannot make the wings out of those films naked you need to cover them with something because you have to think about the fact that number one if you make these wings for sale or whatever because they they will go on dolls that are for sale or whatever and those dolls will be manipulated so if your wings are of naked cellophane or angelina film they are going to break like crazy so you need to offer them some kind of protection uh, the protection for that is usually done with uh, liquid clay, with um, the diamond judikins glaze or that um, glass sealer that I showed you last time I made this kind of stuff. Let me show it to you again. <laughs> And then there is another, I'm going to make a, to post a link after this is over. There's another, but that one is only found in Europe. It's a uh, diamond crystal something. Also a transparent type of peelable paint. Anyway, so uh, the protective sealer for gallery glass works also beautiful for stuff like that. So... As a general idea, we are going to need two wings, obviously. And let's say to start with that we want our wings to be at their max level about as thick as this, because if we make them wider than this, it's a little bit too much, right? And besides that, I'm going to make some simpler ones. So it wouldn't be hard to follow and to try your own. And I have no idea where's my third ball stylus. It's somewhere under the oldest stuff. Okay, so 
to start with, you pretty much need to take into consideration that you'll have to insert a wire somewhere there in order to connect the wing to the back of your doll. Normally that is done by poking holes in the back of the doll and then inserting the end of the wire that sticks out from the wing into that. Uh, what I, I personally, what I used to do, I used to bend that end of the wire and then, um, you know, twist it and then make the hole a little bit wider so it can accommodate the wire folded in two and twisted. And then when I would um, ship out the doll, I would ship the wings separately, um, fit between cardboards with little plugs of uh, styrofoam and a tiny um, tube of uh, super glue. So that the person who bought the doll could just attach the wings by themselves and there would be no danger of the wings getting all messed up during shipping because to ship a, an art doll is a pain, I can tell you. You need a double box with some wooden props inside so it doesn't get squished and all that. But uh, that's what you have to keep in mind that you will have to place a wire. So, in order to do this in a easy and equal way, look for, so you see I got my middle here. I'm going to reinforce it. And I'm going to take this as the end of, let me go lower. It's a little hard to see huh? because it's so shiny. So I have this as the middle. Where's my smaller one? I have this as my noticed, noted middle to make my two wings equal. And then use a bowl or a dessert plate. Like, I think that I'm going to need something bigger than this. Give me just a second to get something bigger than this. This bigger? No, it's not bigger. Just a second, I'm going to think of the big. Because all you need here is the curve of the top part of the wing. So, you have a mark here that's from the middle a little bit inside. And that's what you take as a reference point. And you want this to come pretty much from here up leave like two or three millimeters see so i have this is the middle this is where i i have set about four millimeters and two or three millimeters here and you need something that to do this and then grab not your smallest ball stylus but the next one and mark this but don't go past the top line just mark this then you can take the next larger one that I cannot find so I'll take the next next larger one And 
and do this, and then I'll do the same thing for the other wing. So that's all you need to do is to place your plate or whatever you get. And this will be your direction. Because right now we are just taking the reference points. And then we are going to go with the type of wing that goes pretty much like this. So I'm going to set, because I don't want the two wings to come in contact. So I'm going to set another line on this side of the middle and one on this side of the middle. So I pretty much got my reference points. Get parallel where you stopped here. Get a line parallel to the edge. Again, these are your reference points. And here the same. Then calculate about one inch from the edge. And gently mark your line here. And again, one inch from the edge and gently mark your line here. Now, ideally, you should have some kind of sponge. But not all of us have sponges. So you can use either a soft towel or some folded um, paper towels. And you gently start. And I am showing you on this one, even if normally you're supposed to work on, on this kind of stuff. And this is what we are going to work in the end. But on this one, I'm showing you how you calculate your, your yes, the template is perfectly reusable. Yes, that's why you're working on this. Uh, the, I'm going to show you what is the best thing to use for this. Are those uh, sheets of metal, but they are a little bit spendy. If you want to, to get into the business of making fairy wings, it's worth to spend to get that. They are the little sheets of metal that are for exactly for metal embossing. to make that kind of stuff. And you emboss your edge. Of course, if you work with a lot of care, you can use this as well, but uh, it's a little bit more difficult, especially when you cannot find your next in line. Oh, I have no idea what it went. Because what we need to do here is to get grooves. So you get a groove here. This will be your first groove, and this will be your second groove. And then, you calculate again. First of all, you think, if you want to do the whole wing with wire armature, or if you want to do your wing in translucency. For wire armature, uh, you use a liquid clay. For translucency, you use something like the uh, Judikins diamond glaze or that uh, European thing that I'm going to put a link, because I forgot how it's called. 
diamond something. So calculate how many wires. Usually four wires are the best. You have one here, you have one here, and two in between. So let's consider this as being a wire armature liquid polymer clay. So I want them to be here and the same. I want them to be here. And why I say that on this is much harder to work because it doesn't bend properly. And I'll show you in a minute. But it's much easier to design your wing on something that is straight than designing it directly on the um, baking tray. Okay, now the baking tray, you notice that it has some obvious uh, dips. So your first worry is to get rid of those dips. And as I said, this involves a lot of work. So today I'm going to show you how to prepare your whole thing. Because it's going to take a while to do all this. Because I'm going to tell you exactly how this, what this consists of. After you do your whole thing straight, you design these. you emboss them down and you'll obviously need <clears throat> one wing here and one wing on the other one then you place the wire armature in the grooves you need this part also to be embossed a little bit not as much as the one for the wires but a little bit Yes, go to, go to sleep, Joachim, and you can uh, watch this later. Uh, and that way, whenever you pour, and you can do the, the wire armature with Judikins as well, but that way when you pour, you will have a thicker layer where the wires are, and then a thinner layer in between the wires. And whatever you pour will settle in the areas that you have embossed, which is much easier to do than uh, the way we did it last time on the tile. It is much easier to do and it has a much better result, but it takes a while until you prepare your template. Because once you do all that, then you don't have any more issues. You can reuse the template because once your uh, Judikins is uh, hardened or your uh, liquid clay is baked, all you have to do is to just remove it from the from your embossed. It's pretty much making fairy wing molds, if you want. And you can do this with, uh, for example, I know that I did that one time, I did uh, dragonfly wings, actually. What I did, I just went and I got some uh, dragonfly wing um, photos, close-up photos from Google. And then I, it was on some entomology sites. And then I blew them up. 
I printed them and then I came and I did the whole little circles and stuff in the but I had some of that copper that like the one that Teresa is talking about and then uh, when I poured wherever those little uh, veins were it was thicker and more non-transparent as you can imagine and now you try to uh, where's my burnishing tool because the best is to use one of those um, cabinet mm, sorry this is noisy one of those cabinet knobs to to burnish this but then that's all you do you do your And I need better quality these because I got these from the Dollar Tree, but they are not that terrific. Uh, what did I do with that? No, I lost the other one. I lost my. Oh, there it is. And as I said, the best thing to use are those uh, copper things. Let me bring, bring one. If I can find it. So this, this is what you find, and they are, I think, between like $7 and $15, depending on how uh, thick they are. But when you engrave on these, and again, you need something relatively soft. When you engrave on these, I'll show you the difference between that and this. Where's my... Yeah, I cannot find the biggest one. I'm going to make just a small wing here to give you just to give you an example and try to make it a more dragonflyish. So this is pretty much how it should look on the other side. You see it? And when you have it flattened, whenever you pour in it, it's going to go deeper where you added the veins. So you'll have a much thicker area. Yeah, I need to get a better quality. This one won't work for what I want to show you. And uh, when you pour your medium, yes, and they are, you can get them on sale whenever Hobby Lobby or Michaels have them on sale. But I hope you understand the principle. 
this is pretty much how it works. I might even make this separately as a tutorial so we can move forward. I don't have to do this on a Oh, that, that's a good idea. Send me a link and uh, to put it under here. Let me go grab the biscuit cutter because I think. Sorry, I stopped to grab some sandpaper too. Okay. Yeah, don't forget to send me the link on uh, on Facebook, and I will put the the link where to get those under the the live. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool off just a pinch. Why did I get a thousand? I have no idea. Six hundred. Hmm. Well, don't let me replace this because, oh, maybe not. I'll just try the four hundred first. Okay. Let's gently. Soak it so it would cool off. And uh, what I always advise, doesn't matter if you use veneer or whatever you use at this point, this is the inner circle. Um, always sand, do the first sanding before you remove it from the biscuit cutter. Because it is way easier to hold on to it. I expect this to cool off faster. Okay, and I told you that we are going to sand this off. I done. And we will get an absolutely gorgeous effect. 
on top of all that ink painting painting we did. So I'm going to go directly on a 400. If need be, I can go one lower. <clears throat> but I'll try like this first. I don't want to get too much off. Well, I might have to go get the... Just a minute, let me go grab... Because this one is too low. The 150. <clears throat> let me grab a 240. Okay, this should work much better. It's a little bit awkward for me to sand in this position and try and get this. So it's hard for me to stand with my hands going upwards. Uh, as a piece of advice, when you try to sand, it's better to leave the sandpaper in water for at least half an hour before you start sanding, not start with them brand new, because it's much harder to bend them. But yeah, now you see the real-time thing, because in the tutorials you see everything very concentrated. And uh, the final aspect would be pretty much like brocade. Uh, 
And remember, if you used rangers, ranger um, inks, do not leave this in water because it will come up. Pinatas are okay, but still, don't leave them in water because you might find them in the morning discolored. And you cannot do the capillary effect on a curved surface, really. Okay, can you see the effect that's staying there? It's very delicate. And is that thing even focusing? Yeah, if only the camera would focus so I can see all of it. Okay, there you go. It looks very, very delicate painted. And then you just keep doing this until, so now I move to 600. And you keep doing this until you get uh, most of the area white. And just uh, what was in the capillary effect is pretty much like a um, paintbrush, calligraphic paintbrush design. Okay. And then on this, let me get this out of the way. I'm not done and I'm going to finish this away from the camera. But I just want to show you the final design effect on this. So this, of course, will get buffed. There we go. Come on, baby. I'm trying to get it to focus properly. Yeah, but you'll be able to to watch it later. Because, you know, I always let them get... And then... Remember, we will have this one. 
at about a quarter of the size that it is now with the bottom border and they will have something pretty much similar on the um, lid but with a roundish uh, stamp so see the whole effect and it will look as I said it will look way prettier when it's completely buffed and yes, you can buff it because all the ink is in the recesses. So it will not come out. Of course, you can put some PYM or you can varnish it if you want. But as I was saying, once it is uh, shiny, and there is actually a different effect if only the raised areas are shiny and you have the, the ink left inside not shiny. you know so okay now the next tip is the to make the bottom and the bottom you make it exactly the first bottom make it exactly like for the um much more call it the four burl wood, the first bottom, the one that goes inside. Now, I got asked why uh, I took this out and then I cut around instead of using directly the cutter to cut the, the bottom that goes inside. Well, number one, because this moves a little bit, but also remember that I had to put a little uh, string where the bottom meets the walls. Hi, Fran. Uh, because this is a fairly thick cutter and if you use the cutter instead of cutting, removing this and cutting along the inside of the, the wall of the box, you'll have a much wider gap between the the bottom that goes inside and the walls of the box. And yes, especially at this size, you want the walls to be pretty much close to double the thicker setting on your pasta machine. So the next step is to remove this from the biscuit cutter And I told you, I always prefer to use that uh, fruit peeler. The fruit peeler knives are exceptionally thin, but at the same time, they are quite strong and flexible. So they make the best things to use to remove stuff from baking blanks. And as always, if it all always if it comes off uh, too, it's hard to take it off. It's the same thing as I showed you with the jar. Just use the heat gun on it a little bit, and it will come off like a charm. And here, before doing anything else, you want to sand this area to make it perfectly flat. And here, you want to use like a 150 or even 
230 and place the sanding paper on a flat surface and just burnish with this like this and then you can go lower but you want to do that on both ends of the walls after which you place the bottom and next time after placing the bottom do you need me to show you one more time how to reduce a cane to micro cane because that would only take me a few minutes thank you yes that's my family dollar polish i found chrome nail polish at the family dollar for a dollar so okay so Yeah, I learned my lesson. I don't use my fingernail because remember I told you once that after I had chemo, now my fingernails split like this. They don't split like this whenever they need to split. They split like this. So it's not very pleasant. Okay, and the best thing to use as usual Oh, by the way, as a little side note, remember the, the Gilly Blades, the ones that are so awesome to cut canes? They come in these uh, little boxes that are kind of like this, and they, the little boxes can be used instead of square pairs. And always to warm up a cane, always do this because you want to warm up the inside as well and when you're doing this you're moving the inside okay yeah i don't know i have a, a thing myself i like shimmery nail polish and most of the time i try to coordinate it with what i'm making so it would be less distracting. But now I just happen to try and see how that $1 nail polish works. And it does work good. If I just didn't take it off. But hey, I use silver here. So yeah, I am coordinating. No, I have to warm this up because it's been there for like three months, I think. No, I want to move a size lower. Why do you want to move lower? Because when you're using the big ones and the cane is only up to here you will have the tendency to press more like this and your cane will end up trapezoidal let's see they are very easy to use but you cannot use them on round thing yep and why i love reducing with the square pairs is because they move the whole clay uh, you don't have a lot of clay distortion if you notice there's barely any clay distortion at the ends compared to trying to do like this and all the other stuff by pressing just simply pressing they move the whole clay 
and I have a whole tr the whole tribe here who's hungry. <laughs> Let me show you, and then I'm going to try and, and show you what's going on. Okay, that doesn't work. Can you see them too? And then the other one is in the hole, whispers in the hole. I don't know if you can glimpse his butt. And they are waiting because it's about time for dinner. And unfortunately, I cannot find my smallest, one of my smallest. I, I misplaced one of the smallest pairs of square pairs. So I need to make sure that I press at the bottom on these ones. Yes, I know. Okay, so it see you see it was a fairly extreme um, reduction. <laughs> yeah, he is doing much better now, Don. Thank you. See, it was quite a fairly extreme reduction. Nevertheless, let me get this so it can focus. Uh, nevertheless, because of the square pairs. There's barely any, come on, you stupid camera. There's barely any clay loss. There we go. See? And it was quite a significant reduction. I'll probably go even smaller than this. Yeah, I'll probably go smaller than this for uh, for part of it, and then keep part of this for the edge of the lid. Yeah, I have a lot of experience on reducing cleanly. I mean, I have some. Uh, uh, I showed those before on the on a video, and I thought I think that they are somewhere here. And I have some that I reduced to like not even two millimeters. I reduced them exceptionally small. Yeah, there you go. 
Let's see, I have some that are super, super, super tiny. These are not very tiny. Yeah, look at these ones here. If the camera will want to show them. The ones here. And the ones right here on the edge. These ones, these lines. They are super, super, super tiny. The same as these ones. It's the same edge. Oops. Okay, I dropped them. That's me. I dropped stuff. Yeah, this one doesn't have super tiny, and this one is just serengeti but yeah I, I have some that are exceptionally small they are in another box they are like two two or three millimeters inside yes there's always still detail but uh, any of those tiny ones here the super tiny ones. Well, this one is not super, super tiny, but it's got a ton of detail. I mean, some of the elements are like a quarter of a millimeter, if it ever wants to focus. Can you see it? And yes, they are still seeable. I know I, I do have a few that are super tiny. Yeah, this one is so tiny it's hard to see and also because it's translucent with opalescent. But it makes a gemstone effect. Hi, Tonya. The rest must be in another, in the other box. Okay, I have a, I have a ton of micro canes. These are patchworks and elements of micro canes and translucent canes and all that. But yeah, yeah, we'll do the the rest next time because I've managed to be for an hour and a half, so I'm really good. And I will try to get the better quality this to continue with the with the fairy wings and I will already make the the embossing part. So we can just move to the to filling them. Yes, yes, I did have, and I'm, I will have a distache really soon. I'm, I started to put it together. So you'll be able to get some more of my micro canes. So I'm afraid I need to go lay down now. So I hope you enjoyed it and we'll finish this. I promise you we'll finish this with micro caning and maybe we'll do the middle, the, that round middle actually do it a little bit of a mosaic. Okay, and I'll finish this and buff it off camera because it's easier for me. I told you it's very hard for me to, to buff and work like that with my, because the, see the angle brings my hand above my elbow and to do repetitive movements like this it's very hard for me so okay 
So not tomorrow because tomorrow I have the sponsors live and I cannot really do two, spawn, two lives in one day and I also need to work on something in the morning. But maybe Wednesday we'll continue this. Okay, thank you for being here. And I'll see you again soon. Good night.